Welcome along to part two of our video tutorial where we are creating a simple click game in Scratch. It is called Bat Catcher. And in the first video, we got as far as this where we have a bat flying across the screen and our job is to click on him. When we do, we should hear a sound. There we go. And the bat will get a bit smaller and disappear off the screen once we click them. We also got this crosshair, so that little red um, icon appearing wherever our mouse goes as well, just to make it look a little bit more like a shooting game. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do now in this tutorial is we're going to add in a score panel. So each time we click the bat, we want to get one point added to our score. So we're going to need to go over to this variables tab, and we're going to make a variable. Now a variable is a very common word that you'll hear in um, programming. Let me just create this variable first and I'll explain what they are. We're going to call this variable score. Just leave for all sprites selected and click OK. Okay, now a variable, you've got to think of a variable, I guess, like a bucket. And it's a bucket that holds information. In today's case, this bucket is going to be called score. And inside of this bucket, it's going to hold our score. So at the start of our game, our score is zero. So inside that bucket, Imagine there's a piece of paper with the number zero sitting inside of it. When we click our first bat, we want that score to change. Okay, and it will change to one. So what we do is we empty out that bucket called score, get rid of the zero, and we replace that zero with a one. So this bucket called score is holding information. And in this case, they're going to be numbers. And it's just going to keep track of our score throughout the game, going up by one each time we click on a bat. Okay, so it's going to make a bit more sense as we go on. So let's code up um, this score panel. First thing we need to do is we need to go back to our bat sprite. And we need to look for this little block of code that says when this sprite is clicked. What I want you to do there is I want you to drag out change my variable by one and drop it into this start section. And instead of saying my variable, I want you to say score. So each time the sprite is clicked, we change our score by one point. It's as simple as that. If we start the game, click on a bat, you'll see our score up here is going up by one point each time we click on a bat. Okay, I'll make that a little bit bigger so you can see it. So you can see the score's three, goes to four, goes to five, and so on. Okay, an issue we've got though is when we start the game again, so we're playing a second game now, our score starts at five. It, remembered our score from previously and just picked up from where it left off. I don't want that to happen. I want our game to start with a score of zero. So what I'm going to get you to do here is where it gets a little bit confusing. I'm going to get you to make a new sprite and it's going to be an empty sprite with nothing on it because it's not actually going to appear in our game. So go down to your sprite list and hit the paintbrush to make a new sprite and just leave it empty and go back to your code. Now the name of this sprite I'm going to call controller. Okay, this sprite is just going to have a few features in it that help set up our game. So let me show you what I mean. In the events tab, we're going to bring out when the green flag is clicked. So when the game starts, what I want to do is in variables, I want to set, not my variable, but I want to set the score to zero. So each time we run our game, this score now, should reset to zero. Let's have a look. There we go. Reset to zero. I've got a point, got two points. I'll stop my game. And if I want to play it again, I press the green flag, just watch the score here. It goes back to zero. So we start fresh. Okay, so that is going to be on the controller sprite, the invisible sprite that we're never going to see anyway. Uh, what else can we do? We might add a timer in now as well. I'm just going to move this score. You can actually pick this score up. I'm going to move it down to the bottom left-hand corner. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a timer now of 30 seconds. So we've got 30 seconds to play our game. And to do that, we're going to need to make another variable. So make sure you're on your variable script tab here and go to make a variable. And we're going to call this one time. Leave for all sprites selected and click OK. And still in the controller here, when we start our game, we're going to set our time to 30. Okay, so I'll move that time down to the bottom right corner. And if I start my game, it starts at 30. Okay, but what we need to do now is actually make it count down from 30. 
So to do that, we're going to need to bring in another when the green flag is clicked. And I'm going to use a repeat loop for this. So I'm going to repeat this 30 times. I'm going to wait one second. And I'm just going to take one off my timer. So in my variables, I'm going to change the time by minus one. And that little bit of code there is going to be repeated 30 times. We wait one second each time. So if I run that code now, it starts at 30, we wait a second, and we take one off the time. It loops back around and waits another second, takes another one off the time, and that just keeps repeating and repeating, and that'll keep going all the way down from 30 to 0. Once it gets to 0, it will stop because it will have repeated that little countdown timer 30 times. Okay, so that's looking good. Now the issue is, you'll see in a moment, this time is going to hit zero. Okay, it's zero, but our game keeps going. Okay, we can continue playing our game. What I want to do is I want our game to finish when this timer hits zero. Okay, so when the timer does hit zero, that means our loop has finished. I'm going to go to control here, oh, not control, sorry, events, and I'm going to broadcast a message. And we're going to broadcast a new message, which is called Game Over. So just in the new message name, let's write Game Over. So this is going to send a message out to the other sprites in our game, just telling them that our game is over. But that doesn't do anything yet. Okay, We need to actually tell the computer what to do when it receives this message. Okay, so the first thing we are going to need to do is probably go back to our bat. And in our bat, the first thing I'm going to do is when I receive game over, this is in your events tab. So when I receive the game over message, I want to hide the bat. Okay, I want it to disappear off the screen. Now I'm going to do the same little snippet of code for the crosshair. So I'm going to go back to events. When I receive the game over message, I'm going to hide the crosshair. So our bat and our crosshair will disappear off the page. Now, in fact, I might do that as well for the score and the time. So over in my controller now, let's do the same thing in events. When I receive game over, um, instead of going to looks, you're going to have to go down to your variables for this one because we want to hide these two variables. And we're going to choose hide my variable. And instead of saying my variable, we'll hide the score and we'll hide the time. Okay, so when it gets that game over message, hide both of these things. Um, another thing I want to do is I want the game to stop running. So that means I want all the forever loops that we see all these forevers, we want them to stop running. So over in the controller here, in events, not events, control, sorry, look for this stop all and put that at the bottom just there. Okay, that's going to stop everything from running. And that will probably work pretty well. So let's give that a test run now. This is probably going to take a little while, 30 seconds, but we can <coughs> click all these bats and watch our score go up. 20 seconds there to go. Hopefully, once our time is up, we will see the bat and the crosshair disappear. We'll see the score and the time disappear. And everything should stop running. So we're probably just left with a backdrop um, of the woods, I would say. Let's just wait and see. We're nearly there now. Here we go. Perfect. So our game has stopped, and all we've got left is this backdrop. Which will bring me to my next thing that I want to do. What I want to do is I want to get rid of this backdrop and bring in a game over backdrop. So I want you to click on the backdrop section and go to the backdrops tab and hit this blue button down the bottom to paint your own backdrop. Okay, now it's going to be a fairly simple backdrop. All we're going to do is we're going to paint it in like a dark color and write game over across the top of it. So I might just grab my rectangle or sorry, square tool here. Choose a dark fill color. Turn the outline off by hitting that box with the red line through it. And I'm just going to go outside the lines a little bit and draw that black box. Okay, and that will fill my screen up. 
Then I'm going to grab my text tool, change the color of that text to whatever color you want. I'm just going to go white, and I'm going to change my font to pixel. Looks a bit more like a video game font. And I'll click on my screen there, and in capital letters, I'm going to write game over. Now I can use my arrow here to resize that to make it a bit bigger. I'm going to put it at the top of the page, roughly in the center. So that's what it's going to look like. That looks pretty good. So that's going to be my second backdrop. And that's what I want to appear once our game finishes. Okay, so we're going to have to go over to our controller sprite here and go back to the code. And where can I put this one? When I receive game over, this block of code here, we're going to change the look. We're going to switch the backdrop. There it is there. To... Um, it is called backdrop one for now. What I might do is just change that name so it's a bit more meaningful. So back over in my backdrops here, instead of calling it backdrop one, I'm going to change its name up the top here to game over. That's a bit more meaningful, that name. So back in my code for the controller now. When I receive the game over message, I'm going to switch my backdrop to game over. Okay. Let's give that a test run. Oh, there's an issue. When our game starts as well, we're still stuck on this game over. So what I'm going to have to do is just switch the backdrop up here. So when our game is started, we start with the woods. When our game is over, our backdrop should be the game over one. Okay, so yeah, that's good. Now we're back on the woods. Um, we don't want to wait the 30 seconds to show that, so I won't do that just yet. You might have noticed that the time and the speed Score down the bottom here have not appeared, so we're going to have to make them appear as well. In your variables, when the green flag is clicked, we're going to have to choose show the score and show the time. Let's just give that a run again. There we go. So you can see the score and the time back on the screen now. Okay, we'll test that backdrop out in a minute, but that should be working just fine. Something else that I want to add to the game is some background music. It doesn't need to be loud, just something in the background to immerse the player in the game a little bit more. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to sounds. I'm going to delete this pop sound. We definitely don't need that there. And go down to the speaker and just hit the magnifying glass to search for a sound. The sound I'm looking for is called dance space. If you have a listen to it. It's a little bit weird. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it. So I might have to select it all first. Let me just press Control A. I think that will, yeah, Control A or Command A if you're on a Mac will select all of that. Copy that. And if you click right at the end somewhere and press Paste, there we should have both of those sound files back to back. And what I'm going to do, just here where they overlap, I'm going to reverse it. So I highlight it just by simply clicking and dragging from roughly that midpoint. And I'm going to click reverse. Okay, so let's have a listen to this now. Okay, not too bad. Okay, I'm just going to do a little fade in and a little fade out at the end. So just highlight those little sound waves at the end and fade it out, fade it in. Um, and I'm going to make it softer. Okay, it's too loud for my liking, so I'm going to make it a fair bit softer. Okay, so that's how you edit a sound. You've got all these different things, making it louder and softer. You can do fade in and fade outs. You can reverse it and do a few cool effects. Um, once you're done, just go back to your code. And I'm going to bring in a forever loop. So I want this music to play forever in my game. I'm just going to snap it in under here. So when the green flag is clicked, we're forever going to play the sound dance space until done. All right, let's have a listen. So we've got some music in the background, just very quietly playing. Let's make sure it sounds okay. Yeah, it's not too bad. Scratch music doesn't sound great, doesn't loop very well, but that one sounds pretty good. 
All right, so we've got some music going. Uh, we've got our score, we've got our timer. That is all looking well and good. What I'm going to do now is just get that game over screen working. And I think once we've got that working, we're just about done. So for my game over screen, I want to have a bat appear telling you what your score was. So I'm going to load in a new sprite. I'm going to choose the bat again. But in the costumes, we're going to delete costume A and B. We're going to keep this one here, which is costumes bat C, and delete the last one. So we've just got one costume, this one here. Okay, and back in your code, we want him to appear basically in the middle of the page, somewhere about where he is now when the game starts. So, oh, sorry, when the game finishes. So I'm going to do two things. When the green flag is clicked, we'll get him to go into his position, which is roughly where he is now. So the go to X and Y position. Then we're going to hide him. So he will be hidden on our page when we press the green flag. We want him to come back and reappear when the game is finished. So all we need to do is say, when I receive game over, show him. Okay, so when the game starts, we hide him. When the game finishes, we show him. Um, now once he's in position, just there, we want him to say a little message, which is going to tell us what our score was. So it's going to read the variable here, which is inside the score bucket. And we're going to print it out on the screen. So to do that, we need to go back to our controller. And just in, sorry, in events, when I receive game over again, we're going to go to looks and we're going to choose say. Instead of saying hello, we're going to say our score. So we're going to have to do two things here. We're going to have to do a join. And it's going to say you scored. And in that last box, we're going to drop the variable score. So a little message will say you scored and then give us a number just there. So that's going to appear about there. So that means our bat's going to need to move to about there. I might make that bat a bit bigger, actually. So instead of this bat 2, instead of being 100% in size, make him like 150% so he's a bit bigger. Let's move him to a nice position. Now, because we moved his position... You can see his x and y value have changed. So I'm going to have to make this x value minus 8, which I'm getting from just here. And his y value is minus 15, which I'm getting from here. Okay, and it says you scored 0. And there's no space between scored and 0. So back in my controller, after you scored, I might have to put a space. Okay, let's give this a run. I know that's a little bit confusing, but we'll see what we've got. So we're going to play this game for 30 seconds. Clicking on the bat, watching our score go up. While we're doing that, our timer over here is counting down from 30 seconds. Ten to go. Perfect, so we get our game over message and we get the bat saying you scored 14. Now that bat could probably be moved down a little bit on the page. So again, I've moved his coordinates from minus 8 to minus 52. And if I want, I could change where it says you scored 14, but I think I might just leave that where it is. That'll be fine. Okay, so that is our game all done, I believe. So have a crack against your mates, so you can get the highest score after 30 seconds, and whoever does, they can be classed as the winner.